Uh, Rick's going to talk about Kanban, Kanban. Mm. We're going to talk about how to make, how to write and organize software. Okay. Uh, how many people know what Kanban is? Cool. How many of you guys use it in any form, capacity, or whatever? Sweet. I get to corrupt everyone's mind in this room. Excellent. <laughs> So, um, first of all, who am I? Uh, my name is Rick Harding. I've been coming here for years. Uh, the group helped get me into Linux and stuff back in the day when I worked in Flint as a little one-man IT team. Um, I work for Canonical. Um, I'm on the Juju UI engineering team, um, which I'm leading now. So I've turned manager-ish man, which means Kanban's really cool to me now. Um, and uh, we give you the cool things January like Juju, GUI, 2014 GUI, 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 So we love the cloud and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, okay, so I'm going to convince you guys, hold on, I'm going to get this. Look deep into my eyes, and I will hypnotize you, and convince you of these things, right? That work is basically a queue of things to do, and you have your things to do and things that are done, and you work them from things that need to be done into the done side, right? That's, that's pretty, not too much of a stretch. Multitasking. How many of you guys were like, I'm a great multitasker? Yeah, if you ever stop and think about it, every single study ever done says that multitasking is a myth, that you don't want to do it, it's a waste of time, and context switching is a horrible drain on productivity in any workplace, especially in software, <coughs> where it's a thinking man's game, or a woman's game, and things like phones should never be at your desk, and you should never be allowed to have IM, and all this kind of stuff, because it will cause you to context switch and multitask. Now this one... Some of the people who are very proud about their multitasking skills might fight me on, but the studies prove I'm right. <laughs> um, and three, that all tasks are tasks that can be broken down into smaller parts. You may not do it this way, but most things can be broken down. Uh, you know, to build a building, the first thing you got to do is get a pile of bricks sitting in front of it. You know, like every everything is broken down into small little tasks, and you'll need to kind of keep this in mind as we work through this idea of Kanban. So. I'm going to introduce you guys to my great and powerful friend, the sticky note. <laughs> this is a tool of most powerful organization skills. Um, on a sticky note, you can stick information <coughs> such as what in the world are you doing? You can stick on who's doing it. So I implied it was you, but it could be Bob or John or Jane or whoever, right? So if it's on a sticky note, that's kind of cool. When will it be done? A sticky note can give great powerful information like when this task should be accomplished or if it's been accomplished or what it's up to. And the sticky note can give other bits of information such as, hey, this task, this story, this item is blocked. It's no one's doing it right now. It's waiting in a queue, it's whatever. And all this can fit on a sticky note. And you can kind of like see, you know, hey, you can fit, there's corners with sticky, there's a big main thing. There's information for things like priority and whatnot. And sticky notes are freaking awesome. So everyone go out and buy lots of sticky notes. I just bought stock in their company, you know, before this meeting, so I can get all this money. So in the world of Kanban, you have one mission. Move that card. Move that card. Come on now. You know, you got that sticky note. You're going to move it across a great and powerful board of tasks to do, right? So what we need is a place for our sticky notes to live, a place where you can see what the master plan is, and we can all view visually together just what the heck we're doing as a team. And so you might just stick a board on the wall. And in this case, we don't have sticky notes, but we've got task cards, basically. And Kanban kind of is visually appealing like this, where you have cues of work, and you've got the to-do queue. How many guys have a to-do list right now going on? How many have more than one? Yeah. How many of you guys know how many items are on that list? Okay, a lot of hands did not go up on that one, all right? Because it's hard to visualize on a to-do list what exactly you've got to do. Um, how many of you guys on that to-do list to keep track of what you're actually doing right now? About half of the to-do people, right? And how many of you guys can actually tell me what you accomplished, what's been done this week? All right, you guys are not too bad on that. So the nice thing is that if you consider uh, things that you're working on as little items, little stories, and you know, you go from the working queue, what's in progress to what's done, as a team, if we were to all look at this board, and this is our, our, we're building a software project, and we all stood around this thing, it's very easy to every day look at this and know what's going on, what is in what state. So when the head boss man comes in and goes, hey, hey, how's this thing doing? How's that feature that we requested that you little peons go do? How, how is it? 
you don't go, oh, well, you got to go talk. John's been doing something with that, and, and Bill's up, you know, you got to kind of go piece all together. No, we just go to the Kanban board, and we can visually see what's going on, where, when, and what. So, there are, of course, this is a system which must have rules. The system cannot live without rules and structure. So, first of all, everything should be queued, right? The general idea of this is that you know ahead of time what needs <coughs> to be done. You might even know what order they need to be done. And things will move from one, uh, we'll call it lane, to another. And you may have multiple lanes. So you may have not just the back queue of what we need to do, but it may be in current development. It may be in design. It may be in a lane called, um, let's say, uh, waiting for testing or waiting for uh, quality assurance or whatnot, right? So we're gonna we're basically gonna have these items work across the lanes, but we're going to have queue points wherever uh, items could get backlogged or take longer or whatnot, because we never want to have. Um, we always want to be able to tell where things are, but we don't want to hold things up along the way if we don't have to, right? The nice thing with this kind of uh, idea is if you define what needs to be done up front in, this, in the front queue, you can uh, free up developers or people to pick any item from the list. They all have to be done. And if you, you can do some ordering, but for the most part, all these tasks don't have to be done in a, in a single order. You can pick whatever you want to work on. And I'll show you how our board works like this, because it's actually kind of cool to have the freedom to not just do the same thing every day. You know how many guys are like specialists where you're like, you're the guy that does this one thing on every project and you get stuck with it because they know you've done it before and they make you do it again. Mm -hmm. um, it's, studies have shown that developers um, who can implement some form of change in their daily routine are actually more productive. Um, they're happier, they're uh, more productive because they get a chance to break out of the mold a little bit. Every once in a while, grab a card that's a UI front end change instead of always being the guy stuck working on the email queue system. You know, um, and it's actually it's 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 a really kind of cool uh, able to free you up there. The other thing we talk about multitasking. You will work on your one card at a time. If your card is stuck, then we'll go figure something else out. But the, the idea is that you're going to shepherd this little card for as long as you own it through whatever it needs to go through to get across the board. Um, and but you're only going to work on that one thing. Again, context switching and multitasking, and, and you know you get hung up on this and then that, and it, you know, there's a lot of wasted time in the system. And then that's it, move it across the board, right? So, we'll look around. Except, here's the trickiest part of it all. A Kanban board, the key thing that people miss when they look at one is that these, the, every lane should have a hard limit on how many items are allowed to exist in that lane. You need to limit the amount of work that's in progress at any given time, right? And this was, you know, think of this like your plumbing system. If, you know, the pipe is so big, you can only fit so much through it. If you try to fit more through it, you're going to have problems. Like, and we don't want problems. Um, what this really comes into is that, so let's say we're going to plan a project. We're going to write out the 50 things that need to be done. Okay? Mm -hmm. We may go through and know that our team can move five cards across a board, let's say in a week. Let's say they can all do one card a day, a week. You know, we've got five members of the team. We've got 50 cards. There is no sense going through and bothering with all 50 of those tasks right now because we're only going to get five done this week. The developer shouldn't have to worry about any more than the, than the one they're going to get done this week or whatnot. So we're going to put a queue on how many items are in the backlog for the devs to pick from because we don't want them reading 50 cards and trying to figure out which one looks interesting. They'll spend half a day doing it. <laughs> right? So if we can move five guys in a week, maybe we'll put seven in the backlog and that's limiting the backlog work in progress available. Right? We're only going to have five devs, you can work on one thing at a time, so our working lane will be five cards long. If anything happens to a card in that lane where it's stuck, we don't just say we'll go grab another one, because that card has to move, and there has to be motivation and poking and prodding to get you to move that. You know what, you're stuck, you need to go get help, so we're not going to have this card laying around for a week at a time because, well, I haven't had a chance to talk to Johnny down the road who's, you know, the master of this and can help me unblock. No, 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 let's unblock this and move this along right now. It's, there's less work, wasted time. When you get to, like, your, your testing versus your development cycles, you'll find that, you know, testers may be able to get through uh, 10 cards a week because it's less work to test it than to originally write it. So you may have a testing lane that's 10 wide while your development lane is 5 wide. And what you want is a nice flowing work, you know, work items flowing through the system at a nice rate. To do that, because one's five and one's ten, this is when you'll need a queue in the middle between the two line lanes so that as the developers work, they can fill up the testing 
queue, and the testers can grab a car and move it across, you know. But they're going to get twice, of, twice as many of them done at a time. And so you can monitor that queue to get an idea of uh, how you're doing in the system. Are, are you guys not working fast enough in the development cycle? Are, are the testers doing, you know, are they getting behind too much? Or maybe you should take a dev and move over to testing for a little bit to help keep the flow out and stuff. But we want to make sure we keep like a nice clean system here. And limiting work in progress is this really big thing. So we're going to limit the cards everywhere. Every lane that we have will have some limit. And if you reach that limit, it's a sign that the system is in trouble and we need to look at whether we need to address it. And you can address things in many ways. I need more resources. We need more devs to help keep under our work in progress limits on this lane. We may have to redefine the workflow. Maybe the work, maybe the work in progress limit is just not sensible. You know, we may have to change it. It just doesn't actually work in practice. It's great in management theory or whatever. Um, and so everything will be limited. One of the really cool things about doing this um, is that how many of you guys have an item that you would love to do on your current project but have no time to do? Something kind of mundane, like I would like to update the test runner to the latest version. Or I would like to see if using package a different database package would be faster and more performant for our app. But it's not a priority to get you know to earn money for the company, but it's something important that should probably be done at some point. Um, often this falls under things like CI testing, infrastructure kind of things that you just never make time for. One of the nice things if you limit the work in progress numbers of these lanes is you actually free up developers. If a developer's stuck, then they can go grab something from the Slack lane. Uh, which has various tasks to do. And what's great is devs all have these. They all want to get them done. They all, all these Slack items tend to actually make development better and smoother going forward. If you improve the testing infrastructure, everyone benefits. But it's not a direct bottom line thing. So no one ever says like, hey, you can actually just take this week and work on testing infrastructure, you know? Um, and so what's nice is when you have these work in progress uh, limitations, you have a very predictable amount of work you can get done in a period of time. So as a manager, you can very easily say, this feature is um, 10 cards, we move 5 cards a week, this feature will take 2 weeks to do. And if we have extra time within that 2 weeks, developers can work on making great helpful improvements from the Slack task setup, and, they, and, and no productivity is lost. The higher ups don't know, it's super secret, shh, you know, that you could have gotten the feature done in a week and 3 days. They don't know. And developers love this, right? They, they love the fact that they get to do extra things. So, I kind of mentioned one of the keys to this is that you have certain limitations. So you ever been told to like go through all the features you need to do and prioritize them all? And then you know what? Let's have a meeting next week to see what we've gotten done and reprioritize the list again. And during that week, everyone gets phone calls from, you know, hey, I really want that feature. I really want that feature. And there's all this jockeying. And so you find out the priority from a week ago is no longer good. So you spend hours going through all the tasks and prioritizing them all. Then you've got five cards done. The next week, you all have a meeting again, and you reprioritize, which may be slightly different now, which doesn't matter, because out of the 50 cards, only five disappeared. The other 45 are still sitting there. And do you ever just stick with what you had last time as a priority? Like, no, those things always change and move around. And that's just completely wasted time. And I love, there was a, the, the book on this that I'll mention, had a great story where um, at Microsoft, where they implemented this, they would have weekly meetings to reprioritize all these back tasks, and what they found out was, is after they got rid of the prioritizing, um, and they actually implemented the lanes, they could get two things done um, every period. And what they would do is, is when one of them cleared out, when the queue was, had one, only one item in it, they would go to the, the three people that were stakeholders, and <coughs> give each of you, give me your number one priority thing that you want done for this next cycle of two weeks or whatever. And each of them would, would turn in one, and then they would go, okay, now let's fight about this, which one of these three is going to get done. And they take turns and they try to, you know, once in a while someone would, win, someone would win and get priority. And the general idea was that it was much, much simpler to figure out what is the one next thing that needs to get done instead of what is, what is the priority of item number 37 in this list. That is wasted time by everyone. Because you have to, like, you know, actually study this stuff and figure out, like, ask the question of everybody. So next up, we want to measure. Measure everything. Analytics are, you know, numbers are king and numbers never lie. So as you're working through this, because you're monitoring things going across this board, you're actually tracking the number of items in each lane and how many move across, you can actually get real valuable numbers on what is the workload capacity of your team, you know? Well, how much stuff do you actually get done? And how good are you are actually, um, 
getting out regular releases and how good are you, are, are you at prioritizing what needs to come up next and what is your turnaround time from the time I ask you a feature till it's actually done and deployed. Um, with the Kanban board, it's very easy to kind of tell that information and to see what's going on. And so uh, there's a great opportunity here to measure and be able to, you know, you ever get that question like, how long will it take you guys to do this? Oh, and you're like, well, we got this going on, that going on, and someone's going on vacation, and uh, three months. You just pulled that number out of whatever, right? But if you actually know, we can get five items done a week. This item we estimate to be about 15 items. And Craig's on vacation for two weeks, so I'm actually not going to get 15 items done. All right, because he's going to be gone for two weeks. I'm just going to get, you know, 13 items done. So, okay, this is going to take uh, three weeks and change for the extra two, two bits that Craig wasn't there to work on. You know, you can actually give a real, pretty solid value. And you'll find that over time, this actually gets to be, you can actually get fairly reliable, predictable numbers with this stuff. It's kind of crazy. <coughs> so when you read, when you read about Kanban, the big thing is that there's two, there's two ways to manage your work. You can either push work, the boss says, you shall do the following things, and have them done by the end of the week. And I'm going to go golfing, and I'll see you later. You know. uh, or you can have pull, and, and we really like the pull model because um, you're not, again, you're not wasting time worrying about all the stuff that's coming down from unreasonable. You're letting developers pull work as they have the bandwidth to do it. Um, and it seems like you get the same thing, except that you'll find that when the work is, is pull related, it kind of works out smoother, and, and you don't have as much. It's what's it's real capacity versus like management, um, I expect them to get this much done capacity. Uh, it's kind of a subtle thing, and when I kind of got it, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So yeah, so theory schmeary, this is all like how this is supposed to work. And so I'm going to introduce you guys to, um, let's start small, okay? So this is my, there's several ways to do um, Kanban, right? Uh, the one, like we showed the board on the wall, if you have a company in an office and you can stick a wall with, with post-it notes and everything, that is an amazingly great way to do things. Like that, I wholeheartedly do that. Um, what's great is it, it lends itself to the idea of a daily stand-up. Any of you guys do a daily stand-up for what you're working on kind of thing? Right? I will say daily stand-ups are one of the single greatest things about working at Canonical. It provides so much visibility, uh, interaction with your teammates. Um, and it's that great chance to be like, I worked on this yesterday and I kind of got stuck and does anyone help, can help me out? And problems get solved so much faster with daily stand-ups or so much more interaction of knowledge, uh, exchange of knowledge. Um, and again, there's that visibility on who's doing what, when was it going to get done. Things like if you've ever had a feature dependent on someone else getting their stuff done, if you have a daily stand-up, you'll find that you can plan out your work a whole lot better because every day you're getting a small nugget of information on where they're at with your, your dependent feature, you know. So, but for those of us that work remote or whatnot, we rely on electronic tools, toys. Uh, and so here's a basic Kanban board with, you know, things to do. Uh, and you can look, if I scroll over, I've got a, these are the things I've gotten done. Um, this is just basic. This is just stuff like I need to, you know, set up this interview thing. I've got to, I'm going on a trip, so I've got to, you know, look at a dog sitter. And my wife freaks out when I'm gone, so a security system or whatnot. So tomorrow I'm going to make some phone calls on these things. I'm currently working on these things, and actually this is done, but it's been a crazy day, so it did not get moved. So if I were to look at this board, they could very easily see what it is that I'm working on, what it is that I'm going to be working on, and you know, just more long-term things I need to do. Uh, I do this with um, kind of with Bookie, my open source project. So you can see this is more broken out by, these are the planned features for 0 0.6 that need to get done. Um, these are the features that need to get down for the Android app to be released. Um, and then these are things I want to look at doing. And then again, you know, what is currently in progress and what's complete. So, I mean, what's cool is I can give you this URL and then turn around and ask you, hey, what's the state of bookie development? And do you guys think you could answer the question fairly intelligently? You know, if I said, hey, I would like to hack on bookie. I'm like, great, go look at the Trello board and find some, a card that looks interesting to you. Put your name on it. Put your face on it, move it across into working on, and I, as a project manager, can now very easily see what <laughs> items are in progress, who's doing them, who do I need to bug, you know, how long have they had that card, have they been working on it, you know. So, 
Can you see everybody's parallel? Yep. Yeah. Uh, an open source. No, not uh, none of the stuff that I'm I'm showing off here. Whatever is is, is open source. That's too much. Is that a commercial product? Trello was free <coughs> for most stuff. You 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 pay for um, special features that they add. So they've got support for things like um, attaching Google Docs and uh, other cool stuff. They call them <coughs> power packs or something. And you can pay to get extra added features for things. So, but it is a web app. But it is a web app. Yep, it's a web. It's run by. It's the Trello's run by the guys that do. Is it Fogbuzz or is it the other guys? Fogbuzz, uh, Stack Exchange. Yeah, right. Stack Exchange and stuff. They're a bunch of users because we like. So we like them. Mm -hmm. um, for work, work, we use this thing called um, Lean Kit, and this is our board and it's very large and crazy and scary it gets scarier when I pull out our backlog you know um, so I'm gonna walk you guys through this so you guys could actually come do my job um, <laughs> why not? so we're gonna start uh, in the backlog and like any team I'm so I, 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 uh, I I'm lead of a team that's uh, six or seven guys depending on who's on paternity leave and not and all that kind of stuff and so what we're actually working on right now is the idea of trying to figure out what is that magic number of um, items we can get done in a certain time frame. So we're beginning to work on two week iterations where every two weeks we have what's called planning poker meeting where we run through a series of cards and the team together goes, how long will that take to get done? And the hope is that the wisdom of the crowds will come forth and I say it'll be six you know, days because I'm pessimistic and someone else is say two days because he's optimistic and we end up agreeing somewhere in the middle that it's probably three or four days of work and that's what we should pin on that card. So we do um, uh, two points for a day, right? One point's a half day, two points is a full day and we mark each card with how many days it is. The general idea, we really, 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 in an ideal world, we want one of these cards to be one day's work. That's one day's work to implement, to get code reviews, to get through continuous integration and to land. So practically, most things end up being like a three. <laughs> uh, if a task is large, then we look to break it down to try to fit it within little one-day iterations, and that gives us a bunch of great things. One, no one's ever off on an island working on this code base for a long chunk of time without the ability to A, look up for error, um, B, to have some uh, amount of work done. Developers love that feeling of accomplishment, you know. Woohoo, my card is done! I did something today. When you have like four days, five days, six days worth of work in one branch of things, all those days before the last one, you feel like you didn't really accomplish much. Like, what did you do today? Well, I thought a lot about the problem. <laughs> and I almost wrote a test. Uh, but not quite. Not yet. Tomorrow. I don't want to get too, too, too busy there. And it prevents uh, the code base from getting really hard to test and integrate because you're landing stuff all the time. And we really believe that we should be able to basically do a release from our trunk branch of work at any given time. If we, right now, we're going to have a big new spiel coming up on Monday. So we all know there will be releases done this week. Now we have got a set of cards we want to get done for the release. So the release will happen once those cards move to land it. But it's nice because really, if Mark Shuttleworth came to me and said, I need this new GUI feature that's not released, I would go, no problem. Let me just write down these commands and I will get you a release right now because trunk passes CI, it's releasable. And that's a really freeing feature if for you guys that might work on projects where you do a release every few months or whatnot, like that's scary. I, I can't imagine working that way anymore. Like what, I what is CI? Uh, so, oh sorry, CI is continuous integration. So for like the Juju GUI, it's a web app. Um, we have a Jenkins server that runs and every time a pull request is created to trunk. Um, CI, the Jenkins bot, pulls it down and runs all the unit tests. It runs functional tests with Sauce Labs in IE10, Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. So, like, we hammer it, and if it, if it passes, what, that happens while you're doing code review. So, when code review is done, hopefully by then, the CI results are in. Does this branch break anything or not? If it doesn't, then you can land it. Land, the landing bot will then kick in and it will re-grab the branch because the trunk might have changed since your code review started. Let's say sometimes you do a code review and you're like, this is all right, but you totally didn't have any tests for these five cases and you should rethink how you did this feature or whatnot. You know, you may have a branch in code review landing mode for a day, you know, until you get back to it. Um, and in that time, someone else's code might have landed that would break what you're working on. 
So um, once you get through review and CI says that everything's okay, then you can actually request it to be landed. And it's all automated. We don't believe in people touching it because people screw up. You know I do all the time. I just did it today. Uh, <laughs> broke something because I touched it. And I was very angry that I was, I was allowed to touch it. I will not make that mistake again. Um, so CI is very important to this because it helps us have a, a feeling of confidence in what we're producing um, and our ability to say we can ship it at any point in time, right? So um, this is our backlog of things we want to do. We've got uh, several different kinds of cards. Reds are bugs. Yes, we have lots of bugs that we have to fix. And these are things that are filed and have a bug number <coughs> and go to Launchpad. We have. Um, these green cards, what we call um, feature cards, or they're actually stories or something. What they are is a, it's an aggregate. So, so to support OS 10 is actually several cards of work. This will be like breaking it down, right? To support OS 10, which is actually Safari, or, or no, this is actually OS 10 in uh, Quick Start. We have to make sure that a all our dependencies will build in OS 10. We have to make sure that we update the the set of code that installs Juju. Because right now it does app get install, which app doesn't on OS X. Um, and so this OS X card will be a feature card to represent this task is, is in progress or whatnot, but we'll have individual cards for each chunk of work that will be done one at a time. The other one, um, tooltips. So we got to add tooltip support. Tooltips need to belong in about a half dozen different places in the UI. So we'll break that down where we'll create a base tooltip, like, you know, JavaScript class, we'll apply it to one location, get it reviewed, make sure that the theory and the widget design and all that stuff is good, um, we'll test it, we'll land it, then future branches will then take that and apply it to other locations in the code base. We have firm rules, firm-ish rules. Uh, if your branch is 400 lines of code, a 400 line diff, so that's diff, you know, when you're in the git diff or whatever, it's not how many lines you actually touched, but how many lines that diff is. It uh, has to be 400 or less, you can have one review and one QA and then you can land it. If it's more than that, you have to get two reviews and at least one QA before you can land it. And if it's over 800 lines of Python or 1,000 lines of JavaScript, break it down. Too much. Uh, and that's to aid code review. Uh, I love there's a comic that's like, um, if you have a five line code review diff, they'll find 10 things wrong with it. <laughs> if you have a 500 line code review, you'll, they'll say it's okay. Because <laughs> you'll just kind of go through and go, yeah, da, 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 da. oh yeah, that looks fine, you know. And so the red cards are the bugs, and the and the yellow ones are just tasks. And so these are all the things we'll sit down. So in the pool, you know, we've got a two-week window. So the pool is things that we're not going to get done right now in the next two weeks. The on deck is what we're going to actually run through for our planning poker session. So we'll go through and we'll put numbers on everything on Friday in here. And a few of them have numbers, so what you'll see is that, so like these ones at the top, they were in the planning poker session last two-week cycle, but they weren't deemed worthy of priority to be pulled across. So notice, when I, when I pull cards from what we should do to what we will do, I'm only prioritizing and dealing with the ones that we scored. These, I'm not thinking about. I don't, they're not in scope for this two weeks. They're out of my head, and it's stuff I don't have to worry about, and it helps cut down on, on my workload and the teams. So what do the numbers represent? The numbers are our are, are amount of work. So this is two, that's one day. This is four, it's two days. This is two, it's one day. That's the estimate on what we, as a team, think that card will take to land. All right, so we'll go through and we'll add some more. What, what tool does this use? This is LeanKit. It's uh, LeanKit.com. Okay. Now, the other thing to notice is that we've got, this is just the maintenance. So this is, this is just for bugs, things we need to do as far as maintenance. This is not adding new features, right? This is just getting stuff ready to go. So, oops, this is a critical regression. Someone forgot to enable the upload button. There's a bug. We need a test and a fix. Uh, this is a, a urgent regression. This is the very next card that will get pulled off to work on. Um, down here we've got, notice this has got, you know, one, two, two, four, two, uh, two, you notice my head's on this one because I said I was going to write some docs and I haven't, so I suck. But <laughs> aside from that, um, it's this great visibility on what should I work on next, right? And then notice at the top, these numbers here, this 15, this 9, these are the work in progress limits. I will not put more than 15 maintenance cards in this lane, so we, you know, we will not all have maintenance stuff to work on. 
the urgent one will only be, you know, nine urgent things at a time. Other than that, then it's the lane's a lie. If you've got more than nine urgent items, which for us, each one is about a day, so we've got a week worth of work and urgent, then that just says we've got bigger problems, you know. Um, as far as features, you'll actually see we've got down here um, two, two other lanes. We've got Project 1 and Project A. <laughs> When I first started working here, I was like, what is Project 1? And, and what is Project A? And how are they different? I don't understand. And I said, well, go look at the feature card. So this is actually we're working on implementing a uh, machine view. And this feature is behind a feature flag. If you've never worked with feature flags on a software product, go do it now. It's the most amazing freeing thing ever. Um, the general idea is, is that you have to mangle the URL and then a certain other part of the code base is processed so you can see it.